Hello, Adobe Live, Adobe Live audience. My name is Terry White. I'm joined by Steve Wolf. Steve, you're going to be doing some fantastic logo and branding for us, and we're going to just talk. We're going to answer questions from the audience. We're going to give stuff away during the contest. All kinds of cool things if you want to stay with us for the next couple hours. If you can't stay the whole time, pop in, pop out as you can. Leave it on in the background. Whatever it takes, just keep watching. Share it amongst your friends. Let everyone know to head over to adobelive.com. And if you are watching it on YouTube, that's awesome. But you'll have a better experience if you head over to adobelive.com because that's where the contest tab is. So open a browser, adobelive.com, head there, check it out, and you can do the comments and everything else, including the contest. So Steve, I'm new to your work. Cool. So do you have some, before we get into your actual doing it in front of us, mm -hmm. Do you have a site? Do you have a portfolio, a Behance page? What do you want to show us first? All of the above. Um, you can go to my personal site. Um, no, you're going to go to your personal site. I will go to my personal <laughs> site. We're going to pick things out of so your site. A, and... I have a Behance too. All right, whatever um, you want to share. So this is Welcome people all around the world. I see some yeah. first timers here. I see some regulars here and welcome and of course, Whenever you have questions, just go ahead and post them in the chat. I will do my best to monitor what Steve's doing and monitor what you guys are saying and be that balance between. Yeah, so this is my site, and since this is a uh, packaging-themed... That's stevewolf.co. Stevewolf.co. .co. Great. Um, here's one example of something that I did with a uh, coffee company in Boca Raton, Florida called Wells Coffee. And uh, we did the, the packaging, the system. We did a lot of work for them. Um, how, you know, how, does, how did all the colors work and how did each blend of coffee work? Uh, we, we came up with like a color system code for that. Um, did everything from their tote bag, <laughs> stickers. Like drink deeply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, it's kind of a cool little slogan that they have. Um, yeah, we did, we did a bunch of stuff for them and they're really great guys down there. So, um, I, I got a question. I didn't get a chance to ask the first, yeah. first team. From start, you just met the client to you're, you're done with this project. How long? Mm -hmm. Whew. These guys, actually, I've been working with them for. Well, uh, yeah, I don't mean overall yeah, the client. I mean just I would say, this project. Uh, it, probably around a couple months. This was actually, from everything I've done for them, was almost a year but I'd say even, even aside from this project, average it could average maybe around like a month for okay. a project. Right. Um, some are a little bit quicker depending on if they really know what they want or they're on a time crunch. But ideally, you know, it would be a more than a couple weeks. And do they understand that's how long things take? Or not do they, yeah. like, they come in saying, mm -hmm. okay, when are you going to have this ready next week? <laughs> yeah, not, not what, everyone. What day next week yeah. will you have yeah. this done for us? <laughs> well, if, if that's the case, I definitely have to kind of explain and say, look, you know, this there's a lot more than just me getting right on the computer and making things. It's a lot of research, a lot of um, trial and error. It's a lot of um, back and forth conversation, explaining things to the clients. So, so. The, the clients that understand you mm -hmm. are creating their brand, mm -hmm. they get it. Yes. They get that that's not an overnight process. And they're usually much better to work with. Okay. Much better to All work right, with. Proceed. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So, yeah, this was a really fun project that, and I'm still actually working with them. Um, Gosh, another coffee company, sticking with packaging. Um, this one's called Fair Isle Coffee, and they're in uh, Longmont, Colorado. Mm -hmm. and they had a little bit more of a modern style um, to everything, and they're up in the mountains. And um, this actual, the logo that I created here is kind of based off of the name Fair Isle. And if you ever, if you know what a Fair Isle sweater is, it's like a cool, like, pattern, and it, it's really old actually and this was kind of derived from those oh, patterns okay. um, based off their name but uh yeah I did the same thing you know how does everything look backs fronts drew says looks great steve awesome drew i wish thank i was you. at your level oh please thank you <laughs> i appreciate Me the too. words um yeah so they're they're really great guys too did some illustration work for them as well um, which I, I also like to try to do that if i'm doing a branding project is you know how to you know how the typefaces and the colors and the illustration 
patterns? How does all that get incorporated into the whole package? Um, so yeah, that's uh, I mean, I could keep going in this okay. if you want. Or no, no, that that was it. I just want to get people yeah. kind of that upfront, like what your work kind of looks like, and then now we can go from awesome wherever you want to go next. Yeah, um, as you want, do you want to get right into this? Hey, let's get right into it. Let's do this. It's Tuesday. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> So, I'm going to pull up my brief here. Um, I'm going to be doing... While you're doing that, yeah. um, just a reminder, adobelive.com, click the t contest tab. There's an ongoing contest right now for <laughs> Project Felix. Project Felix is um, in beta. Beta 3 just dropped this week, I believe. Um, you can learn more about that. But definitely want to check out the contest and submit some work. So today, or the next three days, um, I'm going to be doing a tea packaging project, which I chose because I've never done tea before, and mm -hmm. um, I think that the you know the opportunities in tea packaging are really cool. Um, and the style and the overall theme of this tea company is going to be called the name is going to be called the Minimalist Tea Company, and this is basically using uh, minimalism and this idea of living a simple life and incorporating that into this tea packaging and you know how does that look okay. you know as as minimal maybe as we can get now is this real or is this it, one you're this, mocking up? this this is just a, a, a fictitious, fictitious okay a fictitious right. brand i was gonna say man you working on the clock here. yeah no no yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna build this, and I'm gonna, gonna build this yeah up. right um actually that'd be that'd be crazy the client was watching um, <laughs> like, oh crap. Yeah, if he's on the feed. Like it, yeah. ah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of want to have this this modern, maybe even artsy side component to it as well. Okay. So maybe blending this idea of super, super simple with some type of art element to it. Um, and this is, this is kind of a standard quick brief, um, you know, maybe that my client would send me and I would read over this. Um, you know, give, getting some background information about the company, even, you know, who are they, the target audience is. Um, and then... That, one, was, that, yeah. hold on, kind of, that was pretty bad, the ad adhocracy <laughs> show, Opportunity. Ah, I like that. that <laughs> um, the most important thing that I always ask my clients to send me um, is what is the actual information that needs to go onto the packaging. Um, the worst thing that can happen is they don't send anything. They just basically say, you know, we trust you, do what you want, you know, make something look cool. And then after I give it to them, like, oh, well, we needed this, this, this on it. Where is right. it? Okay, well, um, yeah. you know, having having all of the information up front is super crucial because it also helps me understand what I need to be thinking about as I make things. And Nate Galloway is asking, is there somewhere you can post your or share your brief? Yeah, yeah, I can definitely uh, post something. Um, gosh, I could even email it, tweet it. <laughs> I don't know what's well, the best thing. Don't email it. You have to email yeah, yeah. it to everybody. That's so, true, yeah. yeah. I, will, I will find somewhere that I can share all of this stuff that I have because I also have some other things that I'll show based off of, you know, how I'd start a project. So sounds good. Um, number of SKUs. So the actual packaging components I'm going to be making, I'm going to be making three different components based off the tea. So Earl Grey green tea and oolong tea. And I'll also kind of be showing maybe how the branding and the logos could work on like the actual tea bags. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if hopefully time allowing, you know, I can see how things look on like a mug and maybe even some more things. Um, and then the flavor notes describing each tea will need to be on there. And then another cool thing that I like to talk to with my clients is the actual number of options that I'm going to be showing them. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try for three, but I'm actually going to try for maybe even some more options and then maybe lay them all out and get some more, uh, so this will feedback, be over so. the three days, not just yes. the first two hours. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, so keep in mind, this yes, is a, yes, yes. a multi-day process. Yes. Steve will be here today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday, same time slot. So you will see, if you just tune in, you'll see this progress over the three days. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'm hoping, um, I don't have a logo yet, so I'm also going to be doing that as well. I'm right. hoping to get most of that wrapped up today. So we'll, we'll see how That's that goes. Lot. Yeah, exactly. I want to get through this. Now, are you a one-man show, or do you have a team, or...? Uh, my wife, who is actually in this room, she's in the studio, there. audience. <laughs> 
my wife. Huh? Right yes. Um, she is basically the business operator slash manager slash make sure everything gets done, everything on that back end other than design. She takes care of all of that for me, which is awesome. a godsend. Yep. Um, but yes, I do all the creative myself, all the designing. Um, do some client interaction, obviously, but it's good to have that business mind from my wife, who's a lot better at than me. So we kind of team up together. And, and Nate yeah. said he just followed you on Behance, and you're pretty dope. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, this is kind of the brief in a nutshell. I got you know I'm going to be figuring some things out as I go along, but um, I also have a mood board based off of this thing, which is the next thing that I'd like to show. Okay. And so usually before I ever start designing for the client, I like to show them a mood board to just make sure we're all on the same page visually. Um, you know, dip, new ideas can kind of stem from seeing a mood board. For example, since this is the minimalist Tico, um, hmm. I'm showing the client things that are minimal or minimal looking and that aren't necessarily just design. This is to kind of get them in the mood. Um, you know, like how does negative space work with certain things, you know, color. Um, I really like to look at things like architecture and even things in nature because you can really pull a lot of inspiration from these things instead of just looking at That's design 24 cool. seven. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a rough kind of mood. I really like how everything is super clean. Um, I, I like the accents of bright colors. Um, I mean, obviously alongside that, I do like to show some artwork and a little bit of design. Uh, I actually just went to the, the MoMA this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I was like a kid in a candy store and there. Oh, there a, you were. A beautiful place. Um, and so these are some things that have kind of inspired me in this, in this overall theme of simplicity and minimalism. Um, again, with even just, I, I like these bright colors. Um, some of the shapes are really cool and so, how simple a lot of the type is here. So so this kind of gets the client into the mindset of, oh, you know, it'd be cool maybe if we use some cool shapes and colors. You know, may, maybe the type's super simple. It's just kind of mm -hmm. getting them into this world. Um, and another thing that I'm liking about this idea of minimalism is hearkening back to old vintage packaging, which they did a really good job back then of, you know, explaining what the product was, you know, easy to read. If, if these were on a shelf today, you know, I could go to the store like, okay, look, here's the thing that I need. And I'm, I'm not looking around. Like if you go to a grocery store today, yeah. there's so much stuff right. on there. It's overwhelming. Um, so I'm also pulling from old references and okay. it'd be cool to get some of that. Feel. Well, I haven't seen that Rice Krispies in a yeah, long, right? long time. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's awesome stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. So a couple questions. Uh, Max is asking, how long have you been a creative for? So answer that one first. Um, I've been doing uh, Steve Wolf Designs for about three to four years now. Okay. Um, I mean, I've... I mean, looking at your work, I would have yeah. assumed it was a lot longer. I've, I've been designing... A little bit longer than that, but as, as officially Steve Wolf designs about about that time. Oh, so. Years. Okay. Yeah. And do you create, or, or Nate's asking, do you create your mood board with client contribution or on your mm -hmm. own and then present it to them? Uh, both. Okay. I actually have a few clients I've worked with that have a really good sense of design or style. And sometimes they'll send me some stuff and, you know, I look through what they send me and if I agree with a lot of stuff, you know, I'll combine that with what I'm thinking as well. So there's that mesh, but you know, if a client sends me something that I see that is, I know is completely wrong. Yeah. Like, okay, like, <laughs> you know, like I, you know, I appreciate your research and, you know, thought, but like, you know, I, I'm going to be giving you my professional right. advice right. to make sure that this thing is successful, man. But, um, I, I, I normally like to try to, um, guide the client with my own, um, uh, mood boards and things like Fair that. Enough. So, yeah. So, and then my final image in this uh, mood board is things that I don't want this packaging to look like. <coughs> so, like uh -huh. I just mentioned. Okay. Well, just, uh, now, you're yeah. the first one I've seen that, yeah. that does that, that takes the approach of, these are, you know, everyone takes the approach of what, they, sure. what they're aiming yeah. towards. Yeah. It's nice to create that <laughs> reminder of what you don't want it to be. That's awesome. And, you know, it, it's not like there's anything inherently wrong with these. No, no, I mean, I, I, but I understand yeah, where you're coming exactly. from. Exactly. Yeah. 
you know, because, I mean, all these brands they're, are... They're in, all successful exactly. in selling, right, so that's not the point. But the point yes. is, you don't want yours to look like that. Yes, yeah. exactly. And this is going to be maybe more for, like, a boutique, uh, somewhat niche audience. So, um, you know, if we go back to the brief, you know, that kind of explains all that. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be using photography or probably not any gradients and things like that so um <laughs> what is it with gradients uh, like that is <laughs> <laughs> it's just flashy I'm i guess more gradient bashing today yeah. than else. Yeah, i'm just not very good but i mean they, they have their place okay. for sure um <laughs> but that's so that's kind of my mood board in a nutshell just to kind of get everybody in this mindset of kind of what i'm thinking and what the client would hopefully be thinking and as well what i'm thinking anyway so um that is that right there so i'm gonna close all that now when you're assembling your mood board are you assembling it like there you presented it up to us in a slide but are you assembling it on you know in photoshop and files on in your finder window or you know sure pinterest or like what do you all of the above or I love uh, I love Pinterest actually. It's a great resource. I think. Yeah, um, yeah I'm looking at architecture websites. I'm looking at old vintage books, um, which I actually have some here. Um, you know, I'm trying to get to as many sources of inspiration that I can. And normally in the beginning, I don't always try to go like onto the the main like design blogs or mm -hmm. sites that have you know everybody's work, which are great. But I really like to try to get these other sources that might not be as well known because you can really find some unique things to get your inspiration going and, you know, see if you can even incorporate a few ideas and, you know, okay. blend everything together. But, yeah. Um, so, actually, be, before I get into this color palette, which you see on this uh, screen here, um, I don't know if I can show, show can. some of these things here. You have the GoPro I can switch to yeah. when, when you're ready. Yeah, so here, I'll put this here. Oh, there goes the no, art director. The art director's <laughs> taking a fall for the worse. All right. Let's get the GoPro going. So right, I love and slash collect vintage uh, design things. This is, a couple of these are these, this Idea magazine, and it was a, a Japanese uh, design magazine that went on forever. And I actually picked these up when uh, my wife and I visited Tokyo. And what's great about these is it has um, design work in here that, you know, you probably don't see very often anywhere. Um, you know, even some of the, you know, these packaging samples, the simplicity, like the bright colors. Um, I love, you know, seeing some of that typography used in here, you know, like these simple shapes. Like it's a gold mine of, of design work inside of these magazines. And... You know, it, it's finding things like this that can really give you a lot more brand new, fresh ideas other than just seeing stuff online. Um, so, like, I, I encourage everyone to find design examples that no one's seen before because um, you never know what could inspire you or spark something new, which would be great. You know, even, like, some of these logo designs are, are awesome. Cool. So, um, th these are just a few things that I might thumb through. Um before I start just to get the juices flowing here. I don't know if you can see some of that quickly, but um, yeah, so I'm I'm researching books. I'm going to <sighs> antique stores, you know, obviously looking online, just getting as much inspiration as I can. So I did all that. I got some of the, the um, inspiration going there. And then um, I started thinking about colors, which you can see here in this file and you know I'm just I'm just picking maybe a few colors that idea of simplicity maybe it's just like a pop of a bright color like this orange here or mm -hmm. maybe it's using more basic colors like up here or it's more, more muted this is what I'll be experimenting with and trying out as I design just seeing what's going to work and what's not and then I also have to take into consideration I'm doing three different components the three T's, so I need to make sure that they're distinct um, so the consumer knows which, which T is what. Gotcha. Um, now, when you're putting those color themes together, is that literally you just like sampling an orange <coughs> and making a circle, or are you 
Yeah, so using maybe like Adobe Color to put together swatches quickly. Yeah, um, a little bit or of that. Things. Yeah, sure. That that's a great resource. There's a site called Coolers. Yeah, it's, cool. yeah, yeah. That's a cool one. Um, you know, even it's looking at some of these old um, resources and like these magazines, for example. I'm like, oh wow, I really like how they use that that orange and that weird gray or that blue together. And you know, I try to kind of emulate some of that, but also thinking about you know. Th this idea of minimalism, maybe it's just black and white, mm -hmm. you know, but um, so that there's a lot of factors that can determine color. But yeah, sometimes I'm just playing with them by myself and illustrator and, you know, seeing if seeing how colors work together. I'm just kind of tweaking them um, in my file. But yeah, so this is this is just a start for colors. Um, maybe I'll use a lot of these. Maybe some new colors will kind of come up as I go along. But uh, yeah, and then before I actually get into design, one of the last things I do, I do which maybe I need to get the GoPro again, um, is I like to sketch. I don't always sketch. Um, it depends what the project is, but I kind of have a, I don't have the, the neatest, most organized approach to sketching, but I like to just get out any idea that I can um, since this is the minimalist tea company, you know, I did a big M study and I'm also thinking about how the, how the logo type could work. Um, I'm thinking about the, the packaging itself. Um, how long have you been just drawing and sketching from childhood or? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, even through college, gosh, all my lecture classes, I would just doodle on my notes in the back yeah, which so i probably should have been paying more attention in class but well not really look at <laughs> where you are now but uh yeah so you know and even this idea of you know obviously tea and you know i don't know if a leaf component can be brought into there so so these are my rough just ideas i get on the paper and then there's some more out more throughout this book but what i then do is let me see if i can find it you know, I'll take some of the ideas that I sketched out and maybe just fine tune them a little bit through the sketches, even though they're really rough. Um, and then start to think, oh yeah, maybe this could work. Maybe this, this won't work. So then I know in my mind a few things that, you know, I'll want to try out, even shapes of labels that might be on the tins. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I, I encourage people to sketch, you know, it's not always completely necessary. And again, it's also, you know, do what's best for you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of products where you don't necessarily have to fill up, you know, notebooks full of sketchbooks. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can just get in on t onto the computer. But yeah, so that's that's kind of a really quick nutshell of some of the stuff that I do before I actually start designing. Okay. Um, and how long does that process take of just collecting things? Yeah. Um, I mean, ideally, even up to a week or longer. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if the client allows for it, the more <coughs> research that they would allow me, potentially the better that I would have um, more ideas or more things crossed off of what I should be doing or what I shouldn't be doing or getting more educated on the, the genre of what I'm working on or learning more about the client itself. And all of that research helps me as a design because I'm more knowledgeable. Um, but actually, all of the stuff that I did, um, I did actually pretty quickly so I mean you, you can research fairly fast if you need to if, it, if you're on a time crunch but um, cool. yeah then you know I like to just as I'm designing you know I, I'll reference my sketches as I go along um, just to see what I want to try out but uh, yeah that's that's everything before I need to start designing so all right what's next so these are these are like, these are the tins that I'm gonna be working on. They're gonna be like a square tin and here's the cap and the, on the silver. And I'm gonna try some out where maybe there's like a paper label that goes over the top and on the sides. Um, you know, maybe there's one that's just like a, a tin with no label and all the information will be printed directly onto the tin. And I'm just working with different colors. Um, you know, I don't know if it's going to work better with black or white. How does all the information get laid on there? But this is this is my template that I'm going to use for the tea packaging. And I like to design 
um, with the packaging next to me just so I get a better idea of what it might look like when it's finished. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously good when you present um, your idea to the client to actually mock them up on the package that'll go on because it's important to give your client a sense of what it's going to look like because it can help sell the design, which is a whole other thing to talk about is selling your, your designs to the client, you know, so... Right. So if you can be as thorough and detailed as you can, that's going to be better for you. So. Now, this question came up on my earlier stream. Um, I don't know. I'm not looking at it here, but just um, like I noticed you're an illustrator now. So the question was earlier, do you use more Illustrator or more Photoshop or right down the middle? Or Yeah, I, I love to use uh, Illustrator as often as I can. Um, if I'm going to work with really detailed textures, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll, I'll get into Photoshop, but I... I really like to work in Illustrator as okay. often as I can, cool. so, yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, I guess I'll, uh, I'm not really going to get too far, probably, on the and packaging Chad's today. Chad's asking, did you build those in, in AI? Those yeah, chairs. so, it's just, there's it's just a few shapes. I mean, I can show you. Is that a gradient? Oh, no. Yeah, oh, there is a gradient. <laughs> yeah, so, it's just, a, it's just a flat shape here. And then I just put a gradient over just to get some of those, like... To give it some depth. Yeah, some highlights, some dimensionality. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if I needed to get in there and change everything, I could. Uh, and, you know, it, it's also really good if you wanted to work on, like, an actual image of the package. If you mm -hmm. had that, you could bring that into Illustrator or Photoshop. And so um, Nabil's asking uh, kind of the same thing. Where do you get those mock-ups? He made them. Yeah, but there's a lot of resources out there for mock-ups. Um, you know, yeah, we know. talked about this earlier. Yeah. Um, for those of you who weren't on the earlier stream, let me switch to me real quick. And that's me. Okay. Um, so one place you can go get mockups. Uh, these are these are user contributed. So people that are made these and said, "Hey, I want to share these with the Creative Cloud community." If you go to your Creative Cloud app, you can go into Assets. And earlier, I was looking for a can. I didn't type the right kind of can. Let's see if I can do a soda can this time. Um, and that will start to bring up things that you can literally download and use for free. So there's a be couple beautiful soda cans there. There's one in just line art. Um, and I can then use those and replace them with, or replace the labels on them with whatever I want. So a lot of that, and these are all free in the Adobe Marketplace. Now, if that's kind of not what you're looking for, if you need something a little bit more than that, then you can go to Adobe Stock. And let me see. Um, what would I call it? A T10 or T10? Yeah, yeah you could say T10. Let's see what T box happens. even. Ah, no results found in 3D, but let's go look at images. There we go. So, yeah, and there you are. So, there are a couple right there, right off the bat, that I could use. So, yeah, those are great. Uh, these are paid in most cases. So, Adobe Marketplace free, Adobe Stock, better content, but it might cost. Mm -hmm. It probably will cost. Yeah, I like a lot of those, actually. So if you're not good at drawing your own. Now, also keep in mind, you could always just simply download the, um, the preview file and maybe help, maybe trace over it and draw your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're just like, I just don't even know how to begin, you could all, you know, if you, and you didn't want to buy one of these and you want to create your own based on one of these, then you can use these as a background and just draw over it. Yeah, and sometimes, depending on the client, they might actually have the package already um, determined ah, and selected. There you go. So you could ask them, hey, is there a photo you could send me of the package if they have it already? Or they could ask the uh, the printer or the whoever's making the actual package send that um, to even to, to, to the designer. I, I've had a client ask if they, you know, that they would actually send me the actual package without the design on it, just so I, I could get a sense of what it's going to look like. So mm -hmm. and you just take a picture of it at that point. Right. So, so Skyhawk's asking, does, uh, Skyhawk is asking, does Illustrator allow 3D object manipulation like in Photoshop? Uh, Illustrator has had a 3D mode for a while, you know, <coughs> quite a few years now, but it's not true 3D in terms of like 3, 3D output like Photoshop does, but it does have one for this very purpose, for mocking things up on a 3D surface. All right. Sweet. Back to Steve. All right, well, I'm gonna go into logo design mode here. Ooh, I like logo design mode. Yeah, so I wanna do a logo mark, and then I also wanna do the logo type 
and I'm gonna do as many options as I can in the next, what, when I got an hour and a half. Um, and then, yeah, I wanna get out all my ideas onto the computer just to see what's gonna work and what's not gonna work, so. The, and then obviously I'll, I'll start paring them down. All right, so if you were ever interested in logo design in the process, now's the time. Yeah, and I got my, uh, I got my sketchbook next to me just to see, um, you know, what, what, what some of my initial ideas were that I want to try out. So I'm working on a, I'm going to work on the logo mark first. All right. So now for those of you who are not seeing, he's lo actually looking down at some of those sketches he did earlier. So sketched, you know, offline by hand to just rough out some ideas and then go refine them on the computer. Exactly. Yeah, so I wanna, I'm gonna get some more of my tools out there. Yeah, you know, you know, it's funny even like how you how your user face is set up in Illustrator. You know, a lot of people, you know, you basically just got to do what's right for you. What what's easy for you? You got to do so. what's right for you. Exactly. So, uh, and we're not. You're in the no judge. You're in the judge free zone. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, I know some wizards out there in these programs, and you know. I, I'm, I'm holding my tongue. I'm not 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 gonna tell you. Hey, did you know you could do blah blah blah? Yeah, I mean, I'd say at the end of the day, you know, do you, you know, it, it's really what the end product is. You know? Absolutely, it doesn't really matter how you get there. I'm um, liking it already, though. And it, you know, again, the, so the things I'm thinking about as I make this is simplicity, simplicity. I want to get this as simple as I can. So. You know, I think something like that could be interesting. And this is just the logo mark, so this is just the symbol. Um, you know, it even something like this has this cool geometric shape, and the M's kind of, you know, hidden in this negative space here. And yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just seeing what, what's gonna work here, really. Yeah, let's see. I really like this idea of mm -hmm. just using geometric shapes. Um, Very cool. Actually. Now, uh, while you're doing that, I'll ask a question. Um, have you ever used Adobe Capture to capture things that you've sketched by hand? I actually have not. Okay. I think I've heard a little bit about it, but yeah, I actually, I don't think I have, though. Probably, probably some, helpful. Something to think about, yeah. just to give it a shot. Yeah. I mean, it won't be you know nearly as precise as what you're doing now. Yeah. But it <clears throat> can get you at least the initial shape on the screen, and you can just fine tune it from there. Exactly. <clears throat> and I like to, I like to make sure everything is going to work in black and white first. Okay. Now, why do you say that? Well, actually, there's there's probably <coughs> some circumstances where it's going to need to work in black and white if you know even gosh. It, it doesn't have to be packaging, but some stuff like newspapers, for example, um, or certain file types that they can't print in color. Well, I guess I guess the reason I say why I, I know the end the end, end answer, but like, have you run into situations where you might have started something in color? Yeah, and it didn't and work in black and white. Exactly, because I mean, color can influence how things v look visually um, as you're making as you're making them. So. Um, when when it's done in black and white, you know you can always add color after the fact instead of just doing it the you know complete opposite. So I have this idea of doing this combination of a leaf and an M. The leaf obviously representing you know freshness and so adam the fox leaves. is asking really is there anyone who would actually judge someone for their workspace layout yes <laughs> they're out there oh yeah yeah they're, they're usually in in forums <laughs> i mean seriously like do what's yeah. good for you like do what's good for you it doesn't matter it doesn't matter so i'm kind of getting this Interesting leaf kind of shape, but I want to merge this with a letter M. So we'll see if this works or not. Right. Actually, and I'm just I got my sketches kind of close by, just to just as reference. But this one's interesting. I don't know. I see kind of where you're going with it, but I'm dying to see how it ends up. So am I, actually. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So let's see. Yeah. 
now. Kind of like that first logo I made. I want to see if I can get a letter M in this negative space. Okay. And then I'll I'll add some detail to the to the leaf shapes. There's something like the top of my M. All right. So this is the beginnings, hopefully. Let's see if we can get the that letter M to show up a little bit. And you know, the uh -huh. yeah. So it's uh, now revealed. It's kind of it's getting there. It's, it's close. So this is just like no detail in these little leaf shapes up here, but very cool. You now I'm getting my letter M kind of coming through, which which could be cool. I like that the this kind of like cross shape, whatever you want to call it, like mm -hmm. the whole. The whole um, ratio is kind of in a square shape, so that that makes it easier to use on anything really, because it's a it's a nice even shape. Um, and something to something that I've been doing a lot lately is kind of thinking about how your logo is going to work on even things like social media these days. Right. You know, like these companies are probably going to have an Instagram account. How does that look like in the little avatar? Yeah. You know, it's now, just, yeah. From a from a photography standpoint, especially when we're branding and watermarking things on our photos, which, you know, watermarking is one of those things, it's a love-hate relationship for it. But when you think of just not even watermarking, but from the standpoint of a logo, do you ever think of having to design it or do you have to design it in a way where it will work on a dark background, a light background, a medium background, an orange background, a white, you know, yep. all these different colors? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, it's interesting, a lot of type uh, logos you make when you design it for black on white or like a darker color and a lighter background if you just simply use that same logo as your inverse logo so yeah, yeah. as white on a darker background sometimes that translation actually isn't as good as what it needs to be in other words when you see something light colored on a dark background sometimes it optically looks a little bit bigger or mm -hmm. or things look like it's it's fuller and you know like negative spaces can start to plug so you know, you kind of got to keep that in mind. And sometimes you actually need to give them a separate logo type, for example, that's actually slightly adjusted so that when they use that, that logo for a, that's like a light color for a dark background, it's actually correct. Instead okay. of just using okay. the same logo for everything. everything. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, in the, in a perfect world, your logo would work for everything. Um, and we don't live in that world. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. tough, but you know it, it's just because yeah. even with the Adobe logo, we have the mm -hmm. traditional red logo. We have the one exactly. that is white that yeah. is meant to go on darker backgrounds and yeah. It's, so yeah, it's a lot of stuff to consider. Um, but you know, if you think about those beforehand, um, and you give all that stuff to the client when it's done, um, you know, the consistency of the brand and the branding will be. Um, you know, it could potentially last long or longer because it's correct. Got it. So, so what I'm doing right now is just seeing how much detail I can add into these leaves here. You know, and you know, at the end of the day, maybe maybe I don't need this these leaves in here, but I'm just gonna try out as many any kind of combos and ideas as I can. All right, you got a go, Steve. Go from Taryn. Oh, nice. Uh, Adam Fox says, love that. That's fire. Oops. So they're liking what you're doing now. And um, Kevin's asking, how do you translate a defined concept, i.e. design, strategy, mood board, into design, branding, logo, packaging? And I think you're kind of doing that now. Yeah, so, you know, again, it's, it's a lot of things kind of all blended into one. And, you know, a lot of it's really trial and error, and you, you won't know until you actually start getting into things if things are going to work. But um, if you set yourself up with like a process, so for me, when that job comes in, immediately I'm going to, you know, I, I do my research, you know, check, you know, I'm, I'm sketching, check the mood boards, check, just make sure you do that for every project that you can, and then start getting into, into the, into the design. So. And Hugo saying the logo's really looking good. Awesome. 
So if we were your clients, you're done. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. I get, get paid already. Yeah. And I like this. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, there's probably a, some things I want to fine tune later on this, but just making sure everything's. And now I'm seeing how the sketching helps you. Yeah, you know, because and. Because you mm -hmm. already have the idea, and then you just. All you do, so when you get an illustrator, just bang it out. Instead yeah. of having to ideate in, in, in Illustrator. Exactly. And, you know, sometimes, for example, if it's like a like a script logo type that you're making that I might have done by hand, you know, a lot of times I'll scan that right into the computer and then just kind of trace over it. So mm -hmm. you can also bring your sketches into Illustrator. Um, and you can literally just trace over your own work, which is nice, too. So. And just a reminder to the audience, that's where Capture comes in on your iOS or Android device. So another thing I want to do is we're going to get real simple with this and I'm just going to do a really cool simple letter M and I might even use freaking Helvetica about as <laughs> simple and old school as you can get alright you're getting <laughs> laughter from the studio audience nice so I want to do actually I might even make my own M um, actually, yeah, I'm just going to do something real quick with line. You know, there's definitely nothing wrong with just using a, you know, a font or your, a typeface as part of your. Many logos are. Yeah. You know, ideally, you know, if you can add your own unique custom take on it, you know, that's cool. You can make the brand. A little bit more unique and different, um, you know. Make 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 things make something ownable. Chop some of this off. Yeah, so I'm gonna come down a little bit. So this is just a. Simple, simple M. There we go. Cool. It's an M. It's an M. And, you know, it's interesting as you design something that's as simple as that, you know, you, you got to think about the logo in context. You know, this will be used on a, on a package with a lot of other information, potentially with some louder bright color so even though this looks really simple right now mm -hmm. when you see everything together it makes a lot more sense and okay. you know a lot of the times um the logo needs to be simple because you know it needs to be used for a lot of different things and how does that look with everything else you right. know you don't want to overcrowd it so. so chad's asking do you usually let the logo mark inspire the logo type in regards to type type or font choice uh, not necessarily i would say the overall style will determine that um you know if i have an idea for like a logo mark for example that's just like i know this will work or i really want to do this then that might influence a little bit but i would say the overall style or the purpose of why you're doing something should should determine that because i you know they definitely need to to live together and feel like they're in the same family so i'm Still just focusing on different M's. And do you have a formal education in design or did you just start on your own? Yeah, I, I uh, was born and raised in a small town in Nebraska called Kearney, Nebraska, actually. And I graduated from the University of Nebraska at Kearney. And I got, I got my my design degree from there. So, yeah. Actually, cool. I, actually for being in a small town in Nebraska, they, they actually had a, a pretty decent design program, I feel. But, yeah. Awesome. But, yeah, it's, it's unique. Uh, and it's crazy these days, like, how much, how many awesome resources there are. Um, you know, like, Skillshare, this, Adobe Live. Mm -hmm. um, where you can learn a lot about design that I, I didn't, I never had access to when I was in college, so. That's pretty cool, though. We have 24 hours of free design. Yeah, this week. I like that. <clears throat> Give us all your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Do another and Adobe off thing. Off the grid that. vegan is uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, I got a lot of friends from there. Yeah, I don't know, you know, it's just playing with shapes, you know, like. And see, I, you know, once I saw you do that leaf design, I'm like, I, I'm still sold on that one. Yeah, I, it's, it's kind of yeah. cool. Like, I mean, it's it's unique. You know, that's right. something that's going to stand out. And, you know, it's like... So cool for a company that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if I learn how to make tea on the side, maybe maybe, maybe I can use it. Who knows? Well, I think you should go ahead and just flush the whole thing out and put in your portfolio. You never know what you might come up with after that. We, we learned that earlier today. Oh, uh, yeah? They uh, got, you know, had some downtime and designed a whole brand for a fictitious company and ended up getting restaurant work from it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love... Uh, I love uh, passion projects. I think they're, uh, I think it's a good outlet. And yeah, like you just mentioned, all it takes is one person to see it and like it and uh, say, hey, I would love for you to do that, something like that for my company, you know? Right on. Yeah, definitely encourage when, when you have time. I mean, it's hard sometimes, but, you know, experiment and do your own things and, See what happens, so. Another one here. I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit. All right, now this one's looking interesting. This, this might be up there with the leaf. Yeah, so again, I'm like, this idea of just simple, simple, simple. I'm like, liking it. What's like the simplest way I can convey a letter M, yeah. you know? Um, and even, what I'm thinking about in the background is like even for this for example so I got these circles and these these shapes here these rectangles you know maybe these are components that I use in the branding like with for different colors and shapes you know that that feel like they're in the same family as the as the logo I don't know if I space those out a little bit like that See how simple we can get this. You know, and I would do something similar to this for, you know, if it was any letter. You know, I would, I would basically just do a big study on the letter forms and, you know, see for for example, like how simple can I get this logo? Basically, exhausting as many possibilities as you can and then start narrowing them down from there so mm -hmm. I mean that's three bars and a little a little notch on the end I mean right. it looks like an M um, I also had a, an idea maybe it's just now uh, for that one for the, with the three bars yeah this one I'm going to be your hovering art director now do it I I'd like to see it with that middle stem mm -hmm. shorter. Yeah. That's actually a good like idea. Like at the top. Oh, like up no, here? No, no, no. Yeah, no. Oh, Go like if this bottom. goes up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that far. Yeah, not that far. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Dang. Ah, right. oh, you're looking like an M. Dang, I like that. All right. I might need to, to hire you. That's on okay. That's on okay. the side here. The advice is free. I like that. Yeah, if there's any advice from anyone online. I'd oh, don't open it up to them. They'll be asking. I told you a ton of things to change. Chime in, I'll have a bunch of hovering art directors. Yes. Wait, how do we make him talk? Is it on? Oh. See that on? It feels too designed. There we go. Nice. So, again, I'm messing with this idea of a, a leaf. Uh, the 90s called, and they want their drop shadows back. <laughs> I don't see the fun in it. It's awesome. I could use a hovering art director. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't been smashed yet. Uh. <laughs> Think bigger, but keep it simple. Oh, Think I like that. bigger, but keep it simple. Just need to make it a little bit bigger. That's not finished, is it? <laughs> it's not finished, is Dang. it? Dang, <laughs> he's got a cup of coffee. <laughs> the 
The M with the stripes is a winner. Dang. That's what someone says. Yeah, I'm going to see... Yeah, at some point, you know, I'm going to have to make a decision here and just just because of time time constraints. Um, oops. But I want to make sure that I'm exploring as many things as I can here. Make sure everything is centered. This one's got potential. Yeah, so I'm again I'm trying to like combine yeah. Let's this, see leaf, with this, one. this leaf thing with an M. Not quite there yet. Which I think I need to pull. Now that center stem. Mm-hmm. I wonder what it looked like if you dip that down into a V. This right here? No, no. no oh, this? The bottom one, yeah. Oh, you want to get it in there? No, no, no. no. Oh, because no, that's leave, cool, too. That's okay. cool, but <laughs> leave it where it was, but just have it um, with a letter, like a V in the middle of oh, it. Oh, like the, if it cut? The, if it were to come down, yeah. Oh, like if you yeah. get a little cut through there? Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's make sure I got a little room on the sides there. Everything centered real quick. Okay, I'm just I like to take a look, take a step back sometimes, and just you know, even when you look at it small, sometimes you can find different ways to, mm -hmm. you know, even how you view, view the logo you're making. You can see a little bit different, see if it's gonna work. It's good to make sure the logo works at a small size, anyways. Right. Um, and just cut it up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Let me I don't sure. know, for whatever reason, I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Actually makes another little mm -hmm. M in there, which is interesting. Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. Oops. What if the other legs of the M... That's in yeah, that's interesting took on the curve of the leaf. What if the outer Chad's legs? asking, what if the other uh, legs yeah. of the M took on the curve of the leaf? So I guess if you mm -hmm. bowed it out. That would be cool too. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting that that created actually another little, a little negative space on, which is interesting. Yeah, I like that idea. Actually, I'm going to offset this. Uh, it's funny, you could, you could take this approach 50 million ways, so I'm interested to see how he's going to do it. <laughs> I would do, I would duplicate this and do that. Yeah. And do yeah, so it's like, always interesting to see someone else do it. Yeah, I mean, I like to make sure it's just, I, I guess, and check a lot just to see if it's uh -huh. going to, see if it's working. Very cool. Because of the shape that I have, I know if I just take that shape and make it smaller, the proportions will be off. Is the music um, not on, Paul? We have a music request. Bring this guy forward. Oops. The leaf cross is still the coolest with delayed recognition. <laughs> Dang it. Well, it looks like my work's done then, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to... I'm going to be doing a di couple different options for for what I'm going to present. So I want to make sure I have a, I want to be using some different logos. Right. Um, but yeah, it looks like I'll probably be using that one. I like the one. legs of that one. Yeah, so I'm just making sure like this space is similar to this outside mm -hmm. here. Yep. It is. Fine tuning everything. Maybe this gets brought down a little bit. All right, now I gotta see how this guy's gonna work up here. Um, I'm gonna put some points up here. Hmm. 
Oops. I don't want to do that. Push them down. I mean, it's it's really just, in a way, it's almost like a puzzle at this stage. You know, you're seeing what what's gonna work, and then obviously how you're gonna make it. All right, down. so at what point in the process do you show, bring the client into the initial ideas of what you're doing, or do you cut it down significantly from your ideas? Yeah, so for example, all of these logos that I'm making here, I would never show the client this many logos. Okay. Um, when I feel like I'm... So that answers part two. You do exactly. Yeah, you definitely need to cut it down because at the end of the day, it's the designer's responsibility to give your expert opinion and basically why they're paying you. You're, you're giving them the solution rather than, rather than them choosing the solution for you. It's, you know, a comparison that I like is when you go to the doctor when you're sick and uh, the doctor diagnoses the problem. And then if he were to give you a list of like 20 medications and said, okay, now you, you choose the medication to, to cure your illness. I mean, I would be freaking out like, well, isn't that your job to tell me what yeah, to take? Yeah. So um, in that regard, you know, I, I like to show what I'm comfortable or what I would feel comfortable with them choosing or what's a good solution instead of them choosing what I would maybe feel comfortable um, executing in the long run. So Yeah, and as a photographer, I learned that the hard way. You never show a client the photo you don't like. Exactly, because they will always <laughs> pick the it. One they'll pick. They will always pick it. <laughs> exactly. Okay, you can have that one, but uh, just that, don't yeah. put my name on it. <laughs> oh, man. That's a nightmare. Yeah, so don't show it if you don't want them to choose Exactly, it. yeah. Always show work that you are comfortable with. Right. Definitely. I'm going to chop this off oh that's cool i don't know if maybe uh, this, i'm digging that one i don't know just, just something a little bit more unique mm -hmm. uh, oops just seeing seeing how many ways again i can draw a letter m um oh, i also got another another idea i'm trying to actually i might actually not even yeah i'll, I'll still i'll still do a couple more m's I want to try something that's not a letter M as my logo mark. Just kind of going through these sketches here. See if I liked anything that I made earlier, possibly. Um, oh yeah, I had this idea. Oops. I had this idea of using an M Take this one. So, how many do you typically show the client? Uh, mm, usually around maybe three. Uh, you know, I don't like to show too many because sure. you know it goes back to what I just kind of talked about. Um, but if for you know if if I know that hey, that there could be. A, some good options here that I would that could work. You know, I'll show three, but yeah. You know, these are three choices you're all you're always comfortable with. You know, you exactly. you could go either way, and it would be fine with you. Exactly. Yeah. But definitely not showing them too many, though. Yeah. Not, them too many. not to mention the client doesn't want to be overwhelmed. They don't want to have to have a hard decision either. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. So I'm gonna do this like M, like in this, you know, but back to the mood board that I showed earlier, there's a lot of images of like all white and then like a little pop of mm -hmm. like a color or something or an object in the room. And um, maybe this plays off of like all this clean, simple negative space and then something that just kind of like pops off in the corner there. I don't know. Just going back to super, super simple. I might just do a couple more M's and I think I'll call it good on the M's. But it's kind of a fun, fun little study. <laughs> it's like you never knew that so many things could look like a letter M. Well, jmic992 says, I've stumbled across this video by accident. 
I now think I need a career in, into design. Nice. I recommend it. All right. So that's that's a testimonial right there. It's a lot of fun. It's cool because it's something that you can always keep learning from and keep getting yeah, better never too at. Late. Exactly. Um, we'll take these guys off. I'm going to do a stroked version here. See how thick I can get this line weight. Oh, wait. Go back to it being thin. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty classy. Yeah. Because yeah. minim yeah. minim minimalist. I like that. Yeah, I like it thin. i buy that. I... Th I I, I wish I could use this how it is. I, I'm pretty sure that this has been done. Probably. Um, so I'm going to see how I can put a little bit of a unique twist on this. I got a sketch that I did that I want to try out. Yeah, that, that, that's always something too is, you know, after you make a bunch of stuff, sometimes you got to go back and do your research and see if something's been executed. And Kevin's asking, can you show the mood board again? Yes. Here, let me get this down. Full screen man. So this was like, just like the mood again. Just again, on that whole minimalist thing. Yeah, yeah. and it was what I was talking about, like... Uh, like this guy up here, mm -hmm. like it's just all white, and then bam, there he is, and he's right. just, he's, he's What are the, those two, I can't see it from here, but what are those two things like next to him? Are those windows? Um, it looks like, I think they're white, just like white canvases. Okay, cool. Yeah, just, we're just white. <laughs> yeah, it's about yeah, as just, yeah, they're so, it's about as simple subtle, as you get. but they're still there, so yeah. it's like, well, what is that? But it's interesting when you see all these things together, it, it creates a really cool mood, and it's kind of intriguing and mysterious in a way. But it's also very like calming. and of all the things i keep my eye keeps going back to that one yeah yeah, yeah. i really like this one too i like how bright that color mm -hmm. is like to interrupt everything but uh yeah so this was just uh styles and everything else just to get the mood and then um this was more just like art and like how a lot of these designers were combining shapes and layouts also type um this, actually, I saw a lot of this kind of stuff when I went to the MoMA this afternoon, which was actually really inspiring for this project. Cool. So, and then that was the simple uh, traditional yep, brand, just traditional, yeah. like to the Back point. Back when kind everyone of, was a minimalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, to, to an extent for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, look at those; they're very simple to the point. Well, it's cool because like. I, I like to collect some of the stuff. I know a lot of people that like to collect tins and packaging. I mean, it's cool that. After all these years, people are you know collecting this kind of yeah, stuff. I, I think that's I just really told cool. you what it was. Yeah, exactly. Beer. Yeah, beer. That's, that's right? it. <laughs> it's like, oh, I need to go to the grocery store. All I need you to need to beer. know, pick up beer. Oh, there it is. Beer. I'll, yeah, I'm the worst at finding stuff at a grocery store. I'm, I think I might be blind or something. But... And then that's uh, the product that needed no advertising. Yeah. And then, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then this was that last. Uh, what I'm not really looking right, to what do. What you don't want to do. So. Yeah. And I love that idea, by the way. I'll have to steal that. Yeah. And it's cool to show the client that because um, they get an idea of like, oh, wow, like that's kind of what's out there right now. You know, maybe I want to differentiate my brand so it really stands out because, mm -hmm. you know, if it ever made it to, you know, the grocery store, how would it look like it compared to everything else? So, yeah. So that's the, that's the, uh, the mood board if that helps seeing that again. Someone said two folders on your desktop. You're a true minimalist. Uh, if I open this folder, ah, that's uh, the word. That's the one but, where everything's been put away. But we we won't go there. Yeah. We won't go there. So <laughs> every, everyone has that stuff. Every presenter has that stuff. Folder, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> which is ten thousand items that used to be on a desktop. It's like a it's like a beautiful chaos in there. Right. That's for sure. Um, and I want to see. Maybe I just fill in. All right, here's a here's a here's a quiz. Okay. Answer truthfully in the in the chat. If you threw away everything on your desktop, on your computer, would you be okay? Like, could you live without all that stuff on the desktop if it just accidentally got thrown away, trash emptied? What would be the what would be the worst that would happen? Would you be okay with that? 
Dang. <laughs> oh, not. But it's good to back your stuff up. Yeah, it's good to back up. But just if that stuff on the desktop got trashed, would it be the end of the world? Hmm. Could be. <laughs> I would probably say ninety percent of it no, but there's that those couple items that you would really wish you had. Definitely. Yeah. I actually keep a. Uh, I'd have to get into my chaos on that folder, but a lot of the times I keep a. Uh, a folder on my desktop and it's just inspiration mm -hmm. so as i'm going through gosh any website pinterest oh that's really cool i'll just throw it into that uh influence inspiration folder and i just have like a big bank of images um that i like to kind of thumb through that's it's stuff that i like so hugo said yes i backed up today it'd be okay nice back up panic back up. would definitely set in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the end of the world like the apocalypse yeah and so i'm like evil uh, evil series yeah there'd be some files lost but mostly temporary stuff yeah it wouldn't be the end of the world that's good that's good because if it was important i'd probably put it in a folder exactly the the desktop is that temporary folder yes Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I think I've, I mean, I could keep going on M's um, for, for, I think, for timing. I just well, want to. Well, you've got, certainly got three or four favorites for me. So. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm interested, interested to see um, a lot of other people's favorites, too. Yeah, we should, like, put yeah. numbers on each one and let everyone vote for their favorite. Yeah, I and mean, I know which ones I want to kind of... Oh, you got four in a row on each row? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. Right. Nice. So, cool. Oh, nice. I didn't even think Yo, about just that. pick your number. So, number from left to right, one through four, one, two, five three, four, through eight, yeah. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, yeah. What's your favorite? Let's leave it up for a few seconds while we talk about something else. Five. Type it in the chat, your favorite, just one number. You only get to vote once, just one. Your favorite. What would it be? Yeah, and then if as that top M was number one, and the last M was what number sixteen? That's well, four, eight, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. Okay, what what would be your favorite? Yeah. PT says five. Dang, five is one of my favorites too. There it is. I don't know if it's my favorite favorite. I have to look again. As that's going on, uh oh, you got two fives already. I, I kind of know which ones I'm interested in moving forward with. Three fives. <laughs> there it is. I want to... Uh, cool page, lovely. Okay. I'm going to work on the logo type. Number 11. In the meantime. Number 2, number 8, two more, three more fives. All okay. right, fives winning this battle so far. Dang. A couple of number twos. I want to move forward with three at least. No. Or yeah, I, I'll, I'll do three and then I'll just let the packaging... Five, five, five. So. <laughs> okay, five is a true winner. Or, or maybe just one. 16. Ooh. Yeah, somebody like 16. Okay, okay, okay. And a couple of 15s. Nice. Yeah, I like 15 too. Okay. A couple of 12s. So it would be the, yeah, 12's neat. Okay. Another 5. 15 is good. PT, you can't vote twice. <laughs> I see your name. It's highlighted in blue. It's awesome. 5 is the only one that counts. Uh, another 5, 17, <laughs> 5 plus 15 equal 20, okay. Dang. Oh, I like the type choices. Yeah, so what I'm doing right now, by the way, I'm using a little bit of some Adobe Typekit fonts. Nice. Um, I wanted to try a few. I don't always use it, but um, I wanted to see what was out there, especially with this theme. They have a lot of good, simple fonts. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so what I'm doing is... Should have made a poll. Dang it, you're right. Nice. I'm just kind of going through and just, like, quickly typing out, like, what does um, Minimalist, which actually it's going to be the Minimalist Tea Company. So this this is the most important... Victoria's in the house, and she says 11. Oh, nice. Which one is that? That was the three lines, that the, one. This one? Yep. Oh, nice. That was like a collab with you and yeah. I. Yeah. I'll bring you in on the on the tea business when we launch. All right. Um, I don't know. Go back to Helvetica again. So I'm just like, I'm just getting a sense, you know, should it be all lowercase? I'm going to 
bump these all over, and I'm also going to see what these look all caps. Uh, let's see, a 15, a 4, and a 5. Lots of nice. buys. So 5 clearly won. I'll, now it would be second and third choice. I will use that. There's actually a few things I want to do to it, but I will use it for sure. I don't like that. I don't have the the even spacing on the negative space, but I can go ahead and clean that up. I'm just going to probably move that down a little bit. Move that up. Yeah. Um, another five. You got a 16. Nice. Another 12. Chad's asking, what foundries or font shops do you frequent? Besides Typekit, if any. Oh, gosh. Um, a lot of them. I like, uh, I mean, there's some classic ones. Linotype is one of the biggest. Ono Type Co. Um, gosh, what else? There's a lot of fonts that are just like proven um, fonts that like can almost work with anything. Like, uh, oh, Helvetica. You know, there's Universe, Din. I have a lot of fonts that I like to go, like almost go to fonts. Um, I'll actually list those out right here, like fonts that I really like to use. So, and these are fonts that uh, I'll go back and like alter sometimes and like customize the font. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So these fonts right here, I'm just gonna make a quick little list. It shouldn't take too long. Um, All right, I'm gonna show people something in just a second here. Let me get it set up. Since we're educating people. It's all about the education. Lost Type has some cool uh, fonts too. It's cool because you can actually try them out too for free. I mean, then you you need to buy them later, but actually, let me get two examples here. I just thought of another one. Let's open up a file here. Photoshop. some other good ones oh yeah there we go all right let me show a couple things while you're doing that and yeah i can show okay. whatever too all right so um you know someone mentioned foundries and of course we've been talking about type kit and if you're a creative cloud member then you actually you actually already have access to literally tens of thousands of dollars worth of punts. And let me show you how to access it for those of you who don't know. So for example, I've just typed out the word minimalist here. I'd like to see it in some other fonts, uh, maybe some fonts that I don't already have installed. So if I go to my font menu, well, first and foremost, it's kind of cool that it will show me a preview now, at least in Photoshop and many of the other tools of what fonts I do have. But if I'm looking for something new, then there's the add fonts from type kit in all of your desktop apps. So you can get this in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, so forth and so on. When I click on that, that will actually take me to a website, which is the type kit website. I'm already logged in as me, so I can go ahead and just type in my word. And what that will help me do is just see what the fonts look like in that word before I even bother syncing them down. So the ones that don't, you know, that I don't necessarily like, then I don't have to worry about wasting time with them. This one up here, I kind of like right off the bat, this Europa. Yeah, that's a good one. So I can click on it. See, he knows them by heart. Mm -hmm. that's <laughs> I a can good say one. sync all. And it's now syncing those six versions of, of Europa down to my systems. Um, all right, I've never seen this before. Your plan allows you to sync. Paul, oh, have you seen this? Have you ever been over? <laughs> this must be new. Yeah, it's pretty new. I ran across that like last week. So uh, you, never, you already too many fonts synced. Yeah, how, yeah, I've never. I didn't know we had a limit. Look at your right. two hundred forty-four. Yeah, it's like how do I don't even have that many? All right, so I've got to unsync some fonts before I can do this. All the fonts. But had I had that work, they'd be synced. They'd already be on my system, and away I'd go. Let's do some unsyncing of ones I know I don't use. 
very often. As you can see, I use Typekit quite a bit. I would have never guessed I had 244, though. Ooh, I use Lush, but we'll get it later. All right, unsyncing, 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 unsyncing. And, you know, you look at the, the name of the, the typeface, <clears throat> but that doesn't mean you've just got that one. Like in this case, there are four styles associated with that one. So those four count as individual fonts. That's why I have so many. Quake. <clears throat> All right. We're not pro, really. I had that one already. Yeah, and some of these I can see I already have as uh, regular open type fonts anyway. Now, did it update the count or do I have to refresh? Oh, it updates the count. Cool. All right, I'm just going to unsync all. I can always resync the ones I need. Let's get it down, get it down, get it down. Getting there, getting there. 168, 160, 159. So it happens when you sync, 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 and you never unsync. All right, we're almost in the green. All right, we're cool. I'll unsync a few so I can always be able to sync later. Okay, going back to where we were. So let's go back to the fonts. And now we can probably sync our Europa. And I'm gonna say sync all. And that will sync those six fonts. Cool, it's done. And now if I go back to Photoshop, I don't have to reboot, I don't have to do anything extra. Just go to my font list. And I can type Europa, and they're there. So, um, ooh, I kinda like that one actually. So there's my minimum list font in Europa. So that's first tip, is that as long as you don't go over 100, <laughs> you can sync type kit fonts. That's awesome. Built in, is in all, the, that font's available not only in all my Adobe apps, but all my apps, period. And since I have Creative Cloud on two computers, if I go home right now, that font's been synced to that computer and those other fonts have been unsynced from that computer as well. All right, so with that said, that was tip number one. Tip number two, um, and this is a Photoshop feature where if you're trying to figure out what font, like you, you took a picture of something, you're trying to figure out what font is in that picture, like this, this old Agfa film dryer bottle. Well, I have no idea what font that is. So what I can do is just make sure I'm on the type layer um, of the word that I want it to be. So I type the word Agfa. This is a picture of the Agfa bottle. Then we'll go up to the type menu, come down to match font. And, oh, and I should have made a selection around it first. Here, hold on. One step first. Make a selection around what you want first, like that. And now we'll go to the um, type menu, match font. There we go. And it will start searching for fonts that match that particular type. So if you have it, you could just preview it or you can go ahead and sync it right on the spot. And it will then let you preview the ones that you've synced uh, to find the closest match to what you just highlighted. So searching through your fonts and Typekit fonts at the same time until you get the one that's closest to the one you, one you want. Once you click OK, that then will turn or use that particular font and away you go. All right, so a couple tips for people that are working with fonts or type to quickly get typefaces and quickly get the typefaces from images, even that they don't know the particular typeface that was used. Pretty cool. All right, back to Steve. So in this, during that time, I have been messing around with a, uh, a little custom typeface. Um, just building it all with the pen tool, just like nice. a mono. I need to work on this S here. S's, by the way, are the toughest letters to. Because um, of those stupid curves. Yep, because of the curves. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to this. That's definitely not there, but I'm liking how simple and uniform everything is here. Um, I'm gonna pull this off to the side for right now. 
because I want to I need to execute a few of these with all of the information so the Antico Let's see if like there's a, a little lockup. All right, so um, Simon asked me, was there an easy, was there a way to make the font drop down preview bigger? Um, not that I'm aware of. So now I'm just seeing how I can make these. Yeah, Evil Cerise, that limit is new. I'm not sure if it was always there, but it's certainly newly imposed. I've never seen it before. And as you can see, I've been well over 100. Uh, I wouldn't call it getting cheap. It's more just about how many you have synced at one time. I'm not limited on which ones I can use, just how many I can have. Yeah, you should need more than 100 at any given time. That depends on, of course, opinion, but that is the uh, type kit opinion, so that's the one that counts. The match font is currently only in Photoshop. All right. I think I caught up on quite... Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so I'm just, like, kind of mapping out. Yeah, I like that a know, lot. Like, how does all the information work together? Um... See what happens when you look away and answer questions. Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, maybe actually everything is. Um, I want to try something where I do like a little something different. Like maybe it's just like code like this on one line. Actually, well, I might as well just keep these together. I just want to make this super simple because when I get into the packaging. I'm gonna add some pretty bright colors to everything. I'm. I think there's gonna be a lot of different shapes and a lot of information too. So I want to make this simple. I also want to. Um, you know what? I like company spelled out, and for whatever reason, the lowercase O bothers me. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just you know that's that's one of those. I don't know why. I don't like it. Yeah, but. yeah. I'm gonna try a different co as well here in okay. a second. Maybe it does, just kind of small here. I already see a few problems of doing that though. You're welcome, you're welcome, Esther and Simon. Give us some breathing room here. I want to see if I can do a, uh, I think this is kind of cool too when you can kind of like enclose the co in its own shape. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in here. So maybe, maybe I just add a few points here. And then the outside circle will be the So C. Lewis is asking what max are we using? What max are, wait, um, what max are you using? Gonna okay. get one next week. What opinions on the different ones using for Photoshop and Lightroom? I'll let you start. The new black ones are cool, by the way. Or like those like gray ones. Yeah. I want one of those. My, um, gosh, how old is my laptop? Well, if you go up to the about this Mac, it'll That's tell you. That's true. The Apple menu, it'll That's tell you what true. year it is. About. Oh, the very top. There it is. It's a few years old, I think. 2015? Oh, not bad at all. Okay. Wow. Fairly new. So his is, is a year newer than mine. Mine's a 2014. Yeah. Um, as far as your answer to your question, uh, for Photoshop and Lightroom, you want one that's got the best graphics card and the most RAM. So right now, the most RAM you get a MacBook Pro is 16 gigs. And get the fastest graphics card you can. Yes. Because both Photoshop and more and more increasingly, Lightroom will take advantage of that graphics card. So GPU. 
there's something we can do with this. This stuff needs to be a little bit lighter. Maybe I'll actually, I'm gonna delete these. I'm gonna use a, uh, I'm gonna use a more extended typeface because I also have an idea. Okay. This, uh, this logo is no that company I like. This uh, that seal. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. This uh, this company is from Austin, Texas. Where I'm from. <laughs> what a side. Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking the same thing. I didn't ask it though. Uh, what is that? Serendipitous. Um, Steve, would a sideways the be tacky by the minimalist? And I thought Definitely the same no. thing when you made it smaller. You know, what? I was like, is he gonna rotate that? Let's try it out. I just didn't say it. No, I think that's a good option. Hmm. I could just type out a vertical path, but I'm just gonna do this real quick. Oops. Maybe this just lives here. Or, I'll see, I also could rotate it to yeah, like, see, like I sideways. I sideways, wanna, but I, wanna, I, like, I think I like this better. I wanna try both, actually. I think both are pretty. Yeah, I think I'm liking. Uh, I don't know. Now I want to see it the yeah, other I wanna, way. I see but I both. like this though. I want to see both too. Where's the? I'll take this one. Good, good suggestion. Yeah, that's what I was originally meant and picturing when you when you made it smaller. Yeah, I like that. You know what? I like that one better. The first one you did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how things read when they're uh, when they're sideways or. Up and down, vertical. You know why? Because this is the way people would expect it to be. Nah. I like your way because it's like, to me, that was out of the box. I'm like, oh, okay, the going down. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a little yeah. bit, you know, it's got that, so everything's so simple. Right. But that's got that one little unique thing. Um, actually, on this version, I'm just going to write out T and all caps. Yes, thank you. Just for you. Just I got, for me. I got a... <laughs> the hovering art director. Yeah, there, there he is. I got two. I got a real life one. Yeah, there's something kind of... That's why you never design with someone watching. Oh, there's something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to get feedback, though. Yeah, that rocks. Yeah, there's something... I like the first one a lot. Yeah, I, I like mean, that one. Mm -hmm. Probably second choice. Yeah, I want to... It's tough because T is such a short word. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can just, uh, I'm gonna do the kind of like a mono, mono weight here so these things can match up. Just using just a few guides to make Hugo's sure Hugo's concerned, he says, will it work with small sizes though? Uh, might not. Yeah, true, good point. This is where this is a good time to find some of these things out. That's why making things simple is always a good a good idea. And then you know maybe there's you know when when you draw a type out by hand, you know it's one one more way you can really make the type a little bit more unique and ownable. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever company you're working with, it can be it can be a challenge to stand out sometimes. You know, maybe I even raise this crossbar up just a little bit. Can you shape it like like a cup? That's a whole different design. Dang, I know, right? Like a cup, almost cup like. I was thinking about uh, teacups and. You know, using that imagery, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to go that literal with it. This is just kind of quick. I already know I want to widen this out a little bit. This is what makes you the professional. I would have never done that by hand. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I would look for a font. You know, I mean, if you're in a time crunch, you know. know, there's. It, there's definitely nothing wrong with using that, but you know, for me, I don't know why. I just think it's a little bit easier for me to just make it myself. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's 
That's cool. I maybe there's something uh, like a font that already looks exactly like this, but you know, it's probably a little unlikely that it's the exact same. Yeah. So that's it's just one more way to make it a little bit more unique. Miguel, I like this too. All right, so that was the the. Now I need to do T. Fortunately, I already have my E. And now I need to make an A. I'm trying to think how I want to make the A. Oops. <clears throat> Actually, I'm just gonna. Oops. Not the rounded one. Do this. And like, how many of your designs actually end up being hand design type like this? Um, a lot. A lot. Actually, yeah. a lot. Um, oh, that's cool, actually, even with the little fake shadow there. Yeah, you know, if I had some more time, I would, you know, and I might actually do it later in the packaging. Um, I also like to edit and customize pre-existing fonts. So, you know, like outlining the fonts and just finding different ways to, uh, you know, customize a, maybe a crossbar, you know, a, a counter in the letter form, just just anything that might work. Ah, people are saying rotate the company, it would be more like a cup. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so I, I agree. Hmm. Well, it actually could be a. Uh, this is almost like a uh, like a saucer. Mm -hmm. and there's like that's like the top, and then I don't know if that's like a handle. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa! It's almost like. Let's a, say you a, left the dot where it is and just rotated the C. Like rotate the C straight up. I like this. Yeah. Uh, and then Actually, well, on. and then move the dot over, just enough to be the handle. No, no. Oh, just keep like it on the side. Like yeah. Ah, I see. Well, no, no, that confuse people. Yeah, to me that's almost like a. It's almost like an O U. Yeah. Although I mean, it, it's like a cool icon. I mean, if you like blew this up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you could actually use that like somewhere else as like. All right, well, that was, that information. Was, I might, I might, that I might have that. Cents, that was my two cents. Yeah, I, I think I, I want to make sure it reads <clears throat> co. Yeah. Um, right. you know, if legibility trumps like a cool design thing, I don't know, but I, I think I'm still liking that. Um, now I'm just making sure I can get this A right. It's a little wide. <laughs> yeah, and when when you make your own type, you know, you you kind of. You kind of pin all yourself into making sure that it works, and it, you know sometimes it takes a lot of tweaking. It's a lot of guess and check. Maybe not everything's the same height. I want that to breathe a little bit more. Is the A not as wide as the other letter? Sometimes yeah, I think I. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the T and the E look perfect. I think it needs to be a little wider. Oops. Can you make it less stocky? There you go. <laughs> yeah. From the virtual or, or hovering art director. Too stocky. Too stocky. Yeah, it's, you know. <clears throat> no, that, there you go. That was it. You fixed it. Type is definitely something that, man, even. For me, I'm still learning about type. It's something that I don't know if you can even ever master. It's something that you can always keep improving on. And, and I think that's kind of what's cool about it. Um, uh, can you talk about your kerning technique? Yeah, so for this for this example, um, you know, you, you can get into adding a bunch of guides, um, which if I had a lot more time, I'd probably do a little bit more. But you know, for this example, since it's just three letters, you know, I'm I'm optically and visually seeing. You know, is is there too much space in here compared to this? Mm -hmm. um, just just at first glance, is the H and the E too close? I think actually I could probably move this over just a tad, and you know, it, it's just like it's just looking at it for a long period of time and. You know, just seeing maybe I move this over just a, 
a little bit this over a little bit and then so when you look at it it just feels right it feels really balanced you know like sometimes you just know if it's off like if you know if it's like that like you just know yeah, that look just I, like I, that a there was something about it i could just I exactly tell you what it was but it just looked off until you fixed it you know and there's there's like some type rules and guidelines when it comes to kerning you know like because this space is you know there, there's a lot of space and because of how that a and that e um interact mm -hmm. you know you got to kind of account for this there's a lot of there's a lot of letters that kern a lot easier okay. um if you have a font that's um like for the, for instance like helvetica where everything's pretty uniform there's some fonts that are the exact same space for every letter those are really easy to kern because you're basically just dealing with the same shape um, but when you're building it out, a lot of it's visual, a lot of it's getting in there with guides, you're fine tuning everything. Um, yeah, I'm going to, well, actually, I'm not going to outline these guys just yet. All right. Curtis thinks the connector for the A should be a little higher. So it looks weird. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's a little too low. I don't want to get it too high. I was thinking I either, about, yeah. I was thinking about using the oh, same that width might, there. That might work. Hang on. I got my one issue is if that's. Oh no no you're right. It kind of clogs. Yeah, when you get make it smaller, it doesn't look cool. Yeah, I mean you know I I, I could do you know a, <coughs> I could do like an A like this, but I think it kind of gets a little too techy. It's like almost like a little too blocky, but. I don't know if I want to use really an A like that. Mm. Uh, there's something that feels a little bit more. Yeah, it's definitely better down. It's modern just a matter like how this? far yeah. down. So yeah, I, I it's a little you, higher. I hear you, Curtis. I got the same feeling, but I, I don't know what the fix is because I didn't yeah. like it higher. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's getting yeah. it's getting pretty close. I want to add minimalist in here. <laughs> And see, someone says, I, I would prefer the lower connector. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something in between. Yeah. I might go back to that after this. I just want to make sure I got some, uh, some type options set out here. Minimalist obviously being the most important part of this. I want to make sure that that stands out the most. I mean, T, Co, and the are just kind of descriptor words that aren't as oh, that aren't as uh, important really in the grand grand scheme of this lockup. I might actually use a another type kit font. What if the A was more of a triangle with no legs? So if you brought the connector all the way down, actually, it could be like that. Mm. Does that read like an A? No. 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 I think if you bring it all the way down, it's a delta symbol. Oh, if it was like a triangle? Yeah. yeah, that could be interesting. Here, I'll just do this real quick. I wonder if it was almost to the bottom. Yeah. Or, ooh, what if it's just small like that and not connecting in the middle? Yeah, let me see. So here's like... Yeah. Here the, here, this is really quick. That, that would be just the like the, yeah, like the delta symbol. It almost... Uh, it's okay. I'm not yeah. loving it, but it's okay. Yeah. Here, here's what it looks but like. But what if you uh, didn't connect it and just made it small in the middle? Like that. Up, higher, higher, smaller. I like this direction. Yeah, but then it starts to fill in when you make it small. I think because the co is unique how it yeah. is, I think I don't want to. I don't want to add too many unique. Um, cues or custom elements to the rest of it otherwise I think it's going to get a little bit overwhelming I just want to I want enough I would just want a subtle custom thing to everything um, especially since I want to make everything really simple it's kind of it's got a lighter and Jesse's way. saying hey can you try a lowercase just for yes grins. I definitely want to do that Okay. I'm going to add another artboard At some point, you know, Oops. you might want to save. I'm just saying. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> just that 
is a yeah. great idea. It's getting close to the end of the day. I hate for you to lose all that. Normally I do. Yeah. I totally. Uh, oops. Oh, reject. Sorry. I don't know why those are popping up. I thought I turned them on. Don't forget to save. Yes. Yeah, I usually have a habit. I've actually been doing it. Um, but it's funny because it has, it was meaning nothing. But I constantly are commanding S, like every now and then, mm -hmm. just as a habit. Oh, that's funny <coughs> that I actually wasn't even saving anything. Okay, I'm just gonna add another one here. Yeah, so I want to do I'm gonna do a logo that's just like minimalist. Where it's just all like upper lowercase letters. Okay. Because I'm also thinking about how this is going to live on the the tin that I'm going to make. So this this is going to be in combination with a lot of other things. You know, maybe it's all left justified. Maybe um, I'll try a centered one. Oops. Maybe this gets a lot bigger. I'm working out like huge point sizes right now. Open some things up here. I don't, I'm not really liking that how that font looks, upper lower case. Um, let's see if there's any more. Uh, that's actually not bad. Chad saying, what's the name of the font? Um, this font is Chalet London 1960. That's a uh, type kit font. And Kevin says, make the top of the A round smaller, like the top of the O inside the C, and still angled. Mm. So just basically round it. Are we talking about this one? Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring this down. Yeah, what if we yeah, what if, what if we did this? I'm gonna cut these off. Oops, actually I don't need those. Yeah, maybe That's it's got potential. Yeah. Maybe it's just like a uh, Yeah, that arced A here. Mm -hmm. So that's not it's not too boxy. All right, I'm liking that way yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, it's not too boxy. Good idea. Yes. Nice. Yes. It's a little. That's it. It's a little wide that's right now. That's the one. That's easy. Oops. Yeah, because I'm already working with curves here yep. on my co. I like this. I think it's getting there. Make a guide. Put those guys there. Actually, at that point, I'm gonna see if this that actually. Darn, um, connector just keeps bothering me. Maybe the one on the E is too high. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you know what? Th that might actually uh, fix a lot of problems if I just lower everything. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. You know, do I add a little unique? thing is like uh, how high the um, the crossbar is but maybe that was just posing too many problems just balancing these guys out yeah that's kind of cool yeah it's good cool. idea good idea chat it's you know again it's got like that one other little unique element to it I yeah. love it yeah that's it. You I nailed like that it. I'll have to change my uh, my E up here. It's basically just centered back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of looking kind of kind of clean. Oops. So, you know, I'll also need to think about how some of these might live with this. Um, you know, is is this you know, for example if I used uh 
Alright, so I'll I'm just, saying the A it might be a little too wide, but that's a tweak. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to make sure I just get like the good starts of these now, and then like I'll go back and I'll fine tune some of these. Good point, Amy. Yes, but that would be correct. Um, I'm just using this just for an example, but you know, like how how does this live with this? You know, is it if this is an M? You know, does it live to the side? Am I going to be stacking it on mm -hmm. top like this if I'm using something like this? Um, you know, is it a versatile logo where I could I could use it on top? I could throw it on the side here, and you know, Tico runs there. That that's also something I'll be thinking about um, as I design. And you got about ten more minutes today. Yep. Um, so I know for a fact I'm going to start making a few decisions here. I know I want to use this guy. That was the number one number one audience pick. Uh, yes, that is one thing that I'm going to want to use. I'm going to do, do we have a second place? Let's see. There was a little bit of love for this. I'm like, I don't know why I'm liking something with this. Mm -hmm. I might, I'm going to see what I can do with this. I have a few ideas that I could possibly like. I could tile this. Ah, okay. You know, and you could make like a pattern out of this logo, which could be maybe pretty interesting. You know, if you start like stacking these, and even um, later on down the line, if you want to like, you know, switch these with colors, I'm just, it's just for an example. Um, you know, I'm also thinking about the branding components and how I want to use things. Like, I think there could be something interesting in that, but I'm just gonna keep this logo here how it is. And I'm also gonna see if, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? Let's see what we can do with this guy. That was Victoria's pick and one of mine. Yes. So going forward, which what I'll get to tomorrow I'm going to see how I can play with these as my three options, um, using each logo for each different option. Um, and then I'm also going to, I'm going to choose a couple of these guys. I'm going to do a few more, a little bit more fine tuning, but I think there's just something nice about this clean, um, kind of lock up here. Um, also think. Uh, I want to see how I can fine tune this one a little bit. And then I think there's something nice and easy and clean about this thing right here. It's got, you know, each one has a little bit of a, a unique mm -hmm. custom element. Like, for example, like the A's and the Co's and yeah. how the is displayed. And My favorite two, though. Looking at the three together, my favorite two are the two on the left. Which ones? The, uh, the type there, these two. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, these two over here? Of those three. Yeah. Like, you know, if I'm going to do this really quick. You know, you can already start to see... Oops, oh, crap. Yeah, Simon likes the three lines, too, so it looks retro. Nice. You know, this, this ah, completely... So time to start yeah, thinking about what it looks like on the 10. Exactly. So, Perfect. you know, when you see the logo, I mean, this is a really simple lockup, but, mm -hmm. you know, even when you see it on a 10, you you already start to get a different mood and a different feel for how the type is. Now I know why you had multiple 10s. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Got it. And, and these, and these uh, displays here, so this will be like front, back, sides uh -huh. and then this is like the top of the tin um so this so when i get that get to that tomorrow those will be the things i'll be thinking about um you know and it, what i really liked about like like this one if, if i just put it over yeah here, that one was uh, i know just looks I'm liking it it's it looks cool. really modern i mean it's got like some weight to it so it's easy to use I don't know, I think there's something kind of cool with that. Mm -hmm. You know, you could even like, gosh, blow this up and like, maybe it's like ghosted back a lot. Yeah. 
You yeah. know, where it's just kind of there, and then maybe I can. That's cool. You know, I, I'm gonna get into color tomorrow. Um, I could see that. You know, you can start laying things over on top of this information on top. This one I know will work because it's a square and it's just going to be nice and easy. And I think this one will obviously work too because it conveys the idea of fresh tea. Um, obviously the tea leaves mm -hmm. himself and it's got like that that little M hidden in there. Um, That's still my first pick, but I, st I like the three, three, yeah, three lines too. Like I, when I get into the patterns and shapes, like, but back to that mood board that I had, um, you know, there's a lot of geometric circles and squares and shapes and like, how does that work as a pattern with like maybe like a bright color? Mm -hmm. So how, how do those shapes live with Didn't some of these logos? Yeah. So I know that this logo right here and this will work really well with like really bold, uh, geometric modern shapes. Maybe this is just like a really simple, almost like classy, almost somewhat elegant feel to it. Um, with some of the fonts that I decide with, um, yeah, so I know I only have a few minutes left. Four to be exact. Four. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna see how fast I can fine tune some of these. Well, the bill says it almost looks like the Steve Wolf logo upside down from afar. Oh yeah. Oh, th th this one. I have to admit, I like 10 and 14 next to each other. It looks way like a, <laughs> way like the angry chicken. The angry chicken? Yeah, it's, it's cool how everyone can interpret logos. No shortage of examples or um, opinions here. That's good. It's good to get a lot of opinions. Yeah, that curved A, that nail, that one. That's perfect. Yeah. Actually, I don't like the spacing quite right, but it's close. Oops. Oops. Two minutes. Oh, I don't want internet. I don't know why. There's something cool. You know, actually, I don't think I'm going to have it like this, but I think on the tin, because I got to add, like, the the blends of the T and like the, all the other information. I like a, ju a left justified look for maybe one option. But I don't know if the logo needs to be like that. Um, actually, I don't even know. It's interesting the different looks that you get when one's all caps and one's just title case. Mm-hmm. You almost get a little bit more of a modern look when it's like this. All right, this. as we're wrapping up, as he's doing a couple last minute things, don't forget the contest at adobelive.com. Click on the contest tab, check out the contest for Felix, and other contests as we do them will be always listed there. Uh, we're just about wrapping up for today. We will be back tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Paul will be kicking things off with, who are you hosting, Paul? Thompson. Kelly Thompson in the morning. All right. Then I'll be back on with Aaron and Christine. And then Paul will be back on with Anna Rising. And then I'll finish up again with Steve Wolf Part 2. So we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Not today, but tomorrow. Today nice. is done. Yeah, I'm going to fix on that one custom type thing I did too. All right. Thanks, Steve. Uh, look forward to the next one. Uh, Thanks for all the input, too. Our newest follower has been inspired. Yeah. Jamaic992. Yeah, I like hearing all the feedback from everybody. It was all good. All right. Thanks, everybody. We're out of time. Cheers. We'll be back. He's still working on it, but he'll probably work on it the rest of the night. And I'm going to ground this all night. Don't forget to save. Yes. I have <laughs> we'll saved. I've saved like 10 times. Bye, everybody.